Brady Kachuk is entering year four of his seven-year $57.5 million deal. But are the Ottawa Senators ready to move on from him? Does Tom Fitzgerald want to reunite with one of his family members? We have a lot to break down in today's episode of Locked on Devils. Buckle up, everybody. You're Locked on Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked on Devils with Trey Matthews. All righty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on Locked On Network. I'm your host, College Hockey Club Play Announcer, Devils Rider for Bucks and Pitchforks, and also part-time credential media member, Trey Matthews. It is that time. It's silly season time over here at Locked On Devils. Now, if you are new to my channel, silly season is something I like to do during the course of the offseason in which if I see something on the internet lingering around about the Devils being interested in a free agent or a trade scenario, then I love to discuss it on my show, give my thoughts and opinions, and come to the conclusion as to whether or not the Devils should pursue that said player. I've done a few discussions in the past that have come into fruition. I've done episodes centered around Timo Meyer, Vitek Vanacek, and we know how those panned out for New Jersey. And to kick off silly season for the 2024 offseason, it's a big one. And it's an episode that I think I'm going to get some crap for, especially from Ottawa fans. But it is the possibility of the Senators parting ways with their captain, Brady Kachuk. Oh, boy. Like I said, kicking it off with a bang. Now, I didn't just choose this discussion randomly. This was actually a hot topic the last few weeks amongst the Devils discourse because former New Jersey Devil Mike Rupp was on NHL Network and he said that the Devils should pursue Brady Kachuk. Take a listen. I'm not saying this is a, this is going to happen. If I'm if I'm the New Jersey Devils, I'm picking up the phone. I'm calling the Ottawa Senators and I'm having you you could pick the roster here and go get Brady Kachuk. Ooh. That's what I'm doing. Can we do two hot now, takes in one hey, segment? That's what I'm doing this summer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, hey, who do you want? I mean, there's a couple untouchables in New Jersey, but New Jersey needs a guy like that. A gri- oh, yeah. Man. And I, to me, that's – I think that Jersey will be doing something big. big. Maybe not that. Because, listen, Ottawa doesn't want to give up on a Brady Kachuk. No. That guy's unbelievable. No. I'm just saying, if you could – Ottawa's got to shake something up there. I don't know what they're going to do, and I don't know you – know, but I know both teams are going to shake it up in a big way. Okay, we'll circle back to what Mike Rupp said specifically in that clip in the third and final segment. But to kick off this uh, segment, I will look at Brady Kachuk's stats, see where he stacks up amongst the other Senators players. And spoiler alert, he leads the Senators in a lot of categories. In the second segment, we'll look at hypothetical trace and errors put out by Nick Villano over at Pucks and Pitchforks, which is the site that I right at and then like i said in the third and final segment i will circle back to mike rupp's comments and also give my final verdict should the devils pursue this kachuk brother all right when looking at the stats brady kachuk he brings a lot to the table so we already know the asking price will not be cheap 37 goals that led the senators 74 points also led the senators 12 power play goals also led the Senators. 25 even strength goals led the Senators. 8.2 point share rating led the Senators. 294 hits. Clearly, that led the Senators. But if you need reference as to who was the leading hit getter on the Devils, it was Curtis Lazar with 179. 139 penalty minutes. Also, here's a little bit of a tidbit for you. Who was second on the team in penalty minutes for the Senators? It was Ridley Gregg with 66. So that means Brady Kachuk doubles that amount. Now, why would the Devils 
be interested in Brady Kachuk. What does he bring to the table? Well, I just listed his stats and I think it's clear. He's a point getter, but at the same time, he is physical. And that's been a big topic of discussion amongst the Devils discourse because the Devils have seen the likes of Nico Heischer, Jack Hughes, sometimes get bullied around. And it doesn't seem like anyone really comes to their aid and that's been what people have been complaining about for the Devils, which is they're a little too soft. That's why last season they added Timo Meyer. This season they added Curtis McDermott. And we saw what McDermott did to Matt Rempe when it was time for Rempe to pay the piper. But it still wasn't enough for Devils fans because realistically, if the Devils are a playoff team come next season and they re-sign Curtis McDermott, McDermott might not play most of the games. He might only play a few games here and there, but for the most part, he might just be a healthy scratch. And that's something I'll talk about in a future episode. But for Brady Kachuk, he'd be one of the bona fide star players, and he brings that physicality. And we've seen it on full display because when the Devils go toe-to-toe with the Senators, it seems like Brady Kachuk has it out for Nico Heischer specifically. We also saw... In last year's All-Star game, Brady Kachuk got a little tangled up with Jack Hughes. And after the All-Star festivities were done, Jack Hughes actually had to be sidelined for a few games. However, Hughes did say that his injury had nothing to do with what Kachuk did. But it still doesn't change the sentiment, which is Brady Kachuk is a very physical asset. And not only that, he can back it up by getting a lot of points. And I think that's what... Mike Rupp is getting at because he notices that the Devils sometimes can be a little too soft and maybe just adding someone to that repertoire can really help them in more ways than one. But there's this old saying, which is all that glitters is not gold because I don't know if this really fixes the Devils issues. Obviously, I would love to have Brady Kachuk on the roster, but I there's other issues that you have to factor in when contemplating a Brady Kachuk trade, which is how much would you have to give up to get his services? And that's something we're going to talk about very soon because it's not going to come at a cheap penny and there's no way Tom Fitzgerald is going to fleece the senators in this case, because I don't think the senators are going to part ways with their captain for a cheap penny. And then you also have to consider this, which is, What are the devil's issues and what needs to be fixed moving forward? And that's what we'll talk about in the third segment. Now, before we continue with today's episode, let me tell you guys about eBay Motors. I'm a bit of a car guy. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers. And now, let me tell you about FanDuel. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. It has not been a good month for me in terms of sports because the Devils are obviously not in the playoffs, and my Los Angeles Lakers are on the brink of elimination, going down 3-0 to Nikola Jokic. It's just unbelievable, and I am frustrated beyond words. But Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. But on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Okay, let's look at some trade scenarios courtesy of Nick Villano of Pucks and Pitchforks. And we're going to have to see what would the Devils be willing to give up in order to get Brady Kachuk in these hypothetical scenarios. 
The first one, and this might break the heart of many Nico Heischer fan pages, but a one-for-one -one deal. Devils get Brady Kachuk. Senators get Nico Heischer. Captain for captain? This would be even bigger than the time the Devils uh, got Taylor Hall for Adam Larson. And remember the P.K. Subban and Shea Weber deal because Nick Villano also added that in his respective article. The thing is, we've seen captain for captain trades happen in the past before, and Villano brought this up in his article. He gave it the example that uh, Ryan Callahan was traded to the Lightning, and in exchange, the Rangers got Martin St. Louis. But the one factor you have to consider is that St. Louis was on the other side of his better days, and Callahan was never at the same level as Kachuk and Heischer. The, the ceilings were completely different. And in this case, it's like it's all-star for all-star, captain for captain, and I just don't think that works for either side. Because on the one hand, Nico Heischer, I think he is the epitome of what New Jersey Devils hockey is all about. And there's always this debate as to whether or not he was worthy of the first overall pick. And the thing about making these draft picks is that sometimes you have to draft the person that epitomizes what your organization is about. And I can tell you firsthand, yes, it would be nice to have Kale McCarr on, added onto this roster, but I like what Nico has done so far for the Devils. He's a phenomenal two-way player, and he was a finalist for the Selkie Award just last year. I don't think this trade makes sense for either team because – for one, it doesn't fix the devil's issues, and you're getting rid of a fan favorite. You're getting rid of someone who has a lot of potential, has his entire career ahead of him, and you get Brady Kachuk. And Brady Kachuk, phenomenal player. I read you his stats in the first segment, but I just don't think this sort of deal makes sense for either side, and it doesn't fix the issues for the devils, and that is something we're going to talk about in the third segment. All right, next trade scenario. Devils trade away Dawson Mercer and their first round pick in this year's draft for Brady Kachuk. I like this deal because Brady Kachuk is obviously better than Dawson Mercer. And Mercer had a bit of a quote unquote down year, but you have to factor in that Dougie Hamilton, he was out for an extended period of time. In fact, he missed three fourths of the season and that really put a damper on someone like Dawson Mercer because I've talked about this in a prior episode, which is Dougie Hamilton has one of the best clappers in the NHL. He's a phenomenal shooter. And if he's not finding the back of the net, trust me, where he locates the puck, someone like Timo Meyer or Dawson Mercer, they can pounce on that and give Dougie Hamilton the assist. And also, I think Dawson Mercer wasn't really given the amount of power play shifts he deserved but Mercer is an absolute dog but in this case I think Tom Fitzgerald would be willing to part ways with them because it was rumored that Mercer was untouchable last year which is why he was not in any of the discussions for Timo Meyer, and that's one of the reasons why people commended Tom Fitzgerald for making the move didn't have to part ways with Mercer or Luke Hughes or Shimon the Mets or Alexander Holtz. And in this case, I think it would be a little bit different just because Brady Kachuk, multi-time all-star, and he does bring the physicality. He brings a lot of points to the roster. I would say absolutely 100% yes. But you know who's going to say no? The Ottawa Senators. I just don't know if they would accept that type of deal. In fact, I can tell you for a fact, they would not accept Dawson Mercer as the main centerpiece of that deal. You would have to add in a few other players to, to even move the needle in that case. But usually the asking price for a player is not usually what the general manager gets. But in this case, I know things haven't been perfect with the Ottawa Senators, but I don't think they're that desperate to the point where they'll take Dawson Mercer on a first-round pick. It just doesn't make sense. But the one thing I can say is that if Dawson Mercer were hypothetically on the Senators' roster, like, let's just say that deal does come into fruition, I would fully expect for Dawson Mercer 
to sort of have a surgence similar to Yegor Sharangovich in Calgary because the roles would be different. And I think he would be more of a focal point for the Senators compared to New Jersey, where he's in the shadow of Nico Heischer, Jack Hughes, Timo Meyer. He's not a priority. But I think if you put him on the Senators, a team that's been struggling the past few seasons, I think he could definitely be a, a bigger X factor in that sort of way. And it's the same thing with Alexander Holtz. If if Holtz is dealt to a new team, I think he would thrive depending on the situation. If it's a team that's rebuilding, if it's a team that's sort of in the gutter, if it's a team that uh, has been sellers the past few seasons, similar to the Flames and Sharon Govich, I would expect those players to thrive. And honestly, I would be happy to see them get the role that they rightfully deserve. All right. This scenario, I believe this is a deal in which people might be split in the middle if you're a Devils fan. Devils get Brady Kachuk and Shane Pinto, and the Senators get Shimon the Mets and a 2024 third-round pick. First and foremost, similar to the Mercer deal, I don't think the Senators would accept that trade. You would have to add on a lot more. And Volano also talked about this in his article, which is, you might have to add someone like Seamus Casey, but even then, would the Senators accept that? That's the million-dollar question. But here's the dilemma that I think the Devils would run into. Okay, you get some bona fide scores in Kachuk and Pinto, but you part ways with the Mets. What did I say in the previous segment? I said all that glitters is not gold because one of the issues that the Devils have had this season is their depth defensively because when Dougie Hamilton went down with his injury, when Jonas Siegenthaler was dealing with a few injuries, when Luke Hughes and Shimon the Mets looked gassed at times, it, it seemed like there was a revolving door on the Devils blue line and they could never figure it out. And you're putting more pressure on these 20 year old rookies to try to carry the load in, in terms of scoring. And then John Marino wasn't as sharp as he was last year. Same with Kevin Ball. And when Jonas Siegenthaler wasn't injured, it's the same scenario for him. And if you part ways with Shimon the Mets, it seems like you're making that gap even bigger. Now, the thing is, Dougie Hamilton will be back next year, but it doesn't change the fact that they will suffer tremendously in terms of their defensive depth. Because I think the less you ask out of Shimon the Mets this time around, the better he's going to perform similar to Luke Hughes because just too much pressure was put on those kids' shoulders to try to carry the, the blue line for New Jersey. And if you add Seamus Casey to that as well, then that prospect pool just gets smaller, smaller, and smaller for New Jersey. The reality of it is that you can't keep everybody on the roster. So if there's one player that leaves in free agency or if there's a player that's dealt away Who's that next person in line to take that role? Because we saw this happen once again when Dougie Hamilton went down with his injury. Who came up to take his place? It was Shimon the Mets. He was called up from Utica, and he was given a much bigger role. And I think he really helped out on the blue line, even though towards the end of the season, he sort of hit that wall. And that's something that Volano brought up in his article, which is you have to factor in the depth and the thing is, like the Devils, if they get Pinto and Kachuk added onto this roster, their forwards are stacked. No ands, ifs, or buts about it. But the problem is, we've seen this story pan out before. Basically, once again, those are scenarios that were brought up on Pucks and Pitchforks. I will leave a link to the article in the description if you want to hear Nick Volano's thoughts on the matter. He gave some tremendous insight. But it's just like it's so difficult because I don't think the 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 senators are gonna part ways with their captain. I, I just don't see it happening. All right, I will give my final verdict and also talk about some of the other flaws I see in a potential Kachuk deal. But before we continue, let me tell you guys about Indeed. You need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is a hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills when you can do it all with Indeed. Find top talent fast with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like matching assessments and virtual interviews. 
Candidates you invite to apply through Instant Match are three times more likely to apply to your job than candidates who only see it in search, according to U.S. Indeed data. And I've actually used Indeed before to book myself some play-by-play jobs. I enjoy it, and you will too. And with Indeed, you only pay for quality applicants that meet your hiring criteria. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application. Pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire. You need Indeed. And now, let me tell you about Sleeper. Doesn't matter where the devil's finished in the standings. I want to remind you that you can win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. You don't just have to participate in fantasy hockey. You can participate in football, basketball, baseball, college football, all on Sleeper. To win 100 times bet on Sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You're me, Devils fans. You can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with Sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use the promo code LOCKEDONNHL and you'll get a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code LOCKEDONNHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Okay, let's circle back to what Mike Rupp said in segment one. He said that he expects for both teams to do something big. Okay, when you mean something big, I don't think this is what the Devils and the Senators had in mind because that is humongous. I literally said this would be bigger than the Larson and Hall trade that the Devils did years back. I don't think that's going to come into fruition. But I do anticipate for the Devils to do some big game hunting during the offseason, but maybe to not that extent. And he expects for both those teams to shake it up. Yes, they will shake it up. Not cause an earthquake. They will for sure shake it up. The Senators, they're trying to find a way to move the needle. The Devils, they want to get back to the playoffs. And now this is something that I've been hammering home throughout the course of the episode, which is what are the issues for the Devils? What was their demise? Goaltending and defense. That's something we've been talking about because the problem is the Devils offense has never been the issue. In fact, I would argue and say that the Devils offense was pretty good. In fact, more than good. I think it was one of the best in the NHL. But the problem is the Devils could never get a stop when they needed to because it didn't matter if they scored two or three goals because they would let up like five. We've seen that happen a few times throughout the course of the season. So my thing is, like, if you get Brady Kachuk, yes, you add more physicality, and yes, you get more offense, and nobody's going to stop that forward group of Hughes, Heischer, Brad, Kachuk, Meyer, you name it. Come to think of it, I think one of those players would have to be included in the deal if the Senators were legitimately trying to get rid of Kachuk. But that's a discussion for, I guess, never, because I don't think it's ever going to happen. But anyway, it doesn't fix the issues that the Devils have. They need more defense, and they also need better goaltending. Stick with Jake Allen, and now try to see if there's a better option in front of them. I think that's the best course of action if the Devils want to do something quote-unquote big. I said in the previous segment, all that glitters is not gold. Let's look at the Pittsburgh Penguins, for example, because they added Eric Carlson to their roster, and Carlson is the reigning Norris Trophy winner. And he's joining a roster of all-time great players, including Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin, Two players who have won the Hart Trophy before. Obviously, you got Chris Letang. He's been a part of that Penguins dynasty for years. Jake Gensel before he was dealt at the deadline. The thing is, like, the, the Penguins didn't fix their issues, though. They were still relatively old, and their goaltending was a big question mark because I could trust Tristan Jari during the course of the regular season, but the playoffs was my biggest question mark. And the fact that Alexander Nedeljkovic was backing him up, that scratched my head a little bit. But who am I to talk about teams and poor goaltending? Because the Devils uh, 
are probably the poster childs for that. But digressing a little bit, the Penguins added the reigning Norris Trophy winner to their roster, and they missed the playoffs by a little bit. But people had higher expectations for them. And now there's similar to the Devils. They're watching the playoffs from their couch. They didn't fix their issues. And let's use a Devils example, shall we? They added Tyler Toffoli to their roster. But the problem is they didn't fix the issue that they were having, which is their goaltending issue because we saw it on full display during the playoffs. And Tyler Toffoli, albeit I felt as though he was good for Devils, what he missed in speed, he made up for in knowledge of the game. He's no longer on the roster. And Sharon Govich is thriving in Calgary right now. So that's my thing, which is like, I think Brady Kachuk would be a great addition for the Devils, but the problem is it's not worth gutting your team because that's what the Senators are going to demand. And it doesn't fix the issues in the grand scheme of things because if you need more physicality, you can find much cheaper options out there. In fact, the Devils already have a cheaper option in Curtis McDermott because Tom Fitzgerald revealed that he was trying to extend McDermott towards the end of the season. That's my final verdict, which is I don't think getting Brady Kachuk is the smartest idea in the world, not because he's a bad player. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying, like, it doesn't fix the devil's issues, and I feel as though the asking price, if we're being realistic, will be way, way, way too expensive for the devils to commit to. It's not just going to be a bag of chips for Brady Kachuk. It's going to be, like, a few key assets, and then at that point, you gut your roster. So that's my thing, which is it's not going to happen, but it's still fun to discuss. I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts. If you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment down below. If you're listening on a podcast streaming service, hit me up on my personal X page app at TreyMap4 or the show's X page app at Locked on Devils. As for this episode, that's all the time I have for you. Continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day in New Jersey. Go Devils. I'll catch you guys next episode. Thanks for listening once again.